talk about people being in, in the media and we talk about role models and about younger people and even older people, you know, and not just, it's not just about, you know, young kids, it's all the people see me going out and refereeing in the AFL. will think, well, if she can do that, I can do it. So again, you go back to a lot of, it's been mentioned a lot recently. You can't, you can't be what you can't see. So if you see it, you think it's more believable, where if you don't see it, you think, oh, I couldn't do that because there's nobody like me in that position. So yeah, listen, I'm, I am I embrace that title now. Um, like I say I was a bit apprehensive of it before because the kind of pressure would come with it. But you know what? If we can inspire young girls to get into football and whether that be not even refereeing, you know, playing, coaching, sports science, stuff like that, there's so many roles then and so be it. And, and not just young females, you know what I mean? young boys as well, you know, they, they see the likes of Sean in the Premier League, you know, and they might think, well, Sean's there, you know, I can be there. So, yeah, I think there's a, a lot more role models coming and hopefully it'll encourage more people to get involved and, like, you see these conversations won't be happening in five or ten years because it'll just mm -hmm. become the norm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and it was paramount. I think, like, I, I always look back at the leagues I refereed in quite early on and had I not had that exposure to that criticism, you know, that challenging environment, that environment, which is very much, we're going out on a Saturday afternoon and we want to win, nothing else is acceptable, definitely built me up to to kind of gain me confidence, you know, because sometimes you can't you can feel unconfident in a game like that when everyone's challenged your own decisions. But yeah, going through them leagues for two and a half years definitely made me the ref I am today. Um, and had it not been for them types of leagues, I'm not sure I would have progressed through the levels as... Um, as I have I think I'm quite laid back really I always think like I like to let the game flow you know I, I try and let us flow as much as possible because at the end of the day people want to be entertained so um, if we can we let the game flow Um, the players buy into that sometimes you can't so you know sometimes you've got to whatever approach you've got when you're going out in a game the game will dictate that approach so you've got to just take every game as an individual really Um, but I like to show me personality you know I want sometimes with players you've got to I think sometimes players see referees and think, oh, you know, they're not human, they're like robots. So I try and put as much of my personality in there. You know, I try and have a rapport with the players because actually it helps me get through a 90 minutes. If I can have a rapport with players and work with players, it doesn't just make it better for them, it also makes it better for me and, and my match control. So yeah, I would probably say my personality is, is probably the big one. And sometimes that doesn't work because everybody's different, and you know, and people people go to football games and it different mindsets to others. So, um, yeah, I'll approach it the best way I feel on the day. Um, five, ten minutes in the game, we might have to change that approach, but you just adapt as the game goes on, really. Mm -hmm. In in general, men and women are different, not just in football, but in, in real life. So, we always, I always find, and we've done some, um, we've done some, not some research, but we got a training course when we went away with a referees group that said, women are more inquisitive in general, not just in football. So, you give a decision, women will ask you the one and all the ins and outs, the whens, the whys, the whos, and you'll have to explain that more, whereas the guys might ask you a question and after a few minutes they'll, they'll, they'll leave it alone, whereas the women don't. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it, it is different, and I think we need to see that the two it has been different. Um, the game is different, you know, the men's, I would argue, is a little bit faster, the women, you know, a little bit more skillful. But, again, it's, it's individual games, isn't it? It's individual characters, you know, you go out and you work with the characters enough during the season that you know how to manage people because effectively that's what we're doing for 90 minutes. We're out there and we're managing expectations <laughs> of 22 males or 22 females. And, you know, you're going to please some people some of the time and not please others the other time. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast, I think, with my role. Absolutely. And I think, you know, from, from being a referee early on and going to grounds and there's... Listen, I think there's always going to be a conversation at grounds to say, oh, female, because it's not it's not the norm at the minute. Now, I think in five, ten years' time, it will be, so it won't even be talked about. So I understand why the conversation happens now, but any conversation I've had never been, oh, to female, she won't be any good. It's always like, oh, to female, what made you get into this? So the conversation around it has always been quite positive. And, you know, people talk to me about being criticised because I'm a female. I get criticised on decisions I make because my decisions are subjective, the open opinion and the open interpretation, which is is football in general. So people will disagree with me because I'm a referee, but they don't disagree with me because I'm a female referee. They disagree with us because I have to give a decision against their team, which probably nine times out of ten they're not going to agree with anyway. And you know, for me, that's part of football. 